This is the third video on consolidation. We'll study about normally consolidated soil, over consolidated soil and under consolidated soil. So what do you mean by normally consolidated soil? For example, you have a soil okay, and I'm applying a load of an overburden pressure of 10 kilonewton per meter square to the soil. Okay, I'm applying a load. So this 10 kilonewton per meter square is the maximum load to which this soil has been subjected to. Then this soil is known as normally consolidated soil. So the definition is that if the soil for the normally consolidated soil is the soil which had not been subjected to a greater pressure than the present existing pressure. So in this case, this 10 is the maximum value of pressure that the soil has been subjected to. So this soil is known as normally consolidated soil. So the present effective overburden pressure that is in this case 10 kN per meter square is the maximum pressure to which the soil has ever been subjected to. So such a soil is known as normally consolidated soil. Now what do you mean by over consolidated soil? Now what I do is from the soil I remove 5 kN per meter square. Okay. So what will be the value now I, from this 10 I take away 5 kilonewton per meter square. So the remaining is 5 kilonewton per meter square. Okay. So in this case, what is the maximum um, pressure to which the soil is subjected to? The maximum pressure the soil to sub the soil is subjected to is 10, but the current pressure is less than the maximum pressure. Then that type of soil is known as over consolidated soil or pre-consolidated soil. So, soil which had been subjected to a greater overburden pressure than the present existing pressure. So, here what is the pressure it was subjected to? It was subjected to a pressure of 10 but now there is only 5. So, the it was subjected to a greater overburden pressure and the present pressure is less than that. In that case, the soil is known as over consolidated soil or pre consolidated soil. Now we can have a term known as over consolidation ratio OCR where it is maximum overburden pressure by present existing pressure. So in this case what is OCR? OCR will be what is the maximum over, overburden pressure? It is 10. 10 by what is the present existing pressure? It is 5. So 10 by 5 will be the OCR for this example, this soil. Okay. Now, what is under consolidated soil? See, in this, uh, we have studied in uh, consolidation that when uh, we apply a load to the soil, the water will initially take up the load and excess pore water pressure is developed. This excess pore water pressure will be dissipated when the water goes out of the soil or when the consolidation or the compression takes place. Okay, So if it is not fully consolidated under the existing pressure then that type of soil is known as under consolidated soil. The consolidation is or the compression is being done. It is not fully over. The consolidation is not fully over. The water is still escaping out of the soil. Okay, the excess pore water pressure is not dissipated completely. Such a soil is known as under consolidated soil. Now, as I told you that there is over consolidation ratio OCR. If you just consider the OCR values for normally consolidated soil, OCR value will be 1. For over consolidated soil, OCR value will be greater than 1. And for under consolidated soil, OCR value will be less than 1. Okay. Now, this maximum overburden pressure is also known as pre-consolidation pressure. Okay? So, the next topic is the determination of this pre-consolidation pressure. Okay? Determination of pre-consolidation pressure and this uh, pre-consolidation pressure can be determined using graphical procedure known as Casagrande method. Casagrande it is put forward by Casagrande and this is the curve as you all know this is the curve between the void ratio and the overburden pressure. 
So this is the plot obtained from a consolidation test and from this curve you can find out the pre-consolidation pressure using a graphical method. Now I'll explain what is the procedure. First you have to find out a point in this region where the the curvature is maximum. So I am identifying a point E such that the curvature is maximum at that point. Okay. Now at E I draw a tangent to the curve. So EF is the tangent to the curve at point E. Okay. Now at E I also draw a horizontal line EG. This EG line is horizontal. So I got two lines. One is the tangent EF which is tangential to the curve at point D and the other is EG. It is horizontal and it is drawn at E. So here you can see an angle, right? Angle E, uh, angle G, E, F. You can see here you can see an angle and I'm going to bisect this angle, okay? So I bisect this angle and this is the angle bisector. So this angle will be equal to this angle, okay? So this is the angle bisector. Now what I do is, here you have the straight portion of the curve CD, okay? This CD straight line is extended backwards to meet the angle bisector at a point P. Like this. So CD is extended backwards and that line meets the angle bisector EH at point P. Okay. This P value, the, the value of sigma corresponding to this P value will give you your pre-consolidation pressure. Okay, so this is how you graphically determine the value of pre-consolidation pressure. Now we'll do a problem. The following results were obtained from a consolidation test. Initial height of the sample is given as HI is equal to 2.5 centimeter. Height of the solid particles HS is given as 1.25 centimeter. The pressure is given also the dial gauge reading. In centimeters are given, dial gauge, reading, dial gauge reading is not directly given. The dial gauge reading is converted to centimeter and the value is given. We need to plot the pressure void ratio curve and determine the compression index and the pre-consolidation pressure. So this a similar question was asked in the university exam in May 2019. So if you look closely observe the question, we need to plot a graph between void ratio and pressure. And we know that we need uh, for compression index that is CC and for pre-consolidation pressure, the plot has to be between void ratio E and log sigma bar, log P, right? So we need to plot the pressure in a log scale. So we have to plot a semi-log graph. On y-axis you can plot void ratio and on x-axis on the log scale you can plot the pressure given in the question. Okay. So for plotting this curve we need to find out the value of void ratio at each pressure value. Okay. So we will be following this procedure. The pressure value is given in the question. Dial gauge reading in centimeter is given in the question. Okay. So we need to find out the delta H value. That is the difference in the dial gauge reading in centimeter. That can be obtained just by taking the difference of these two values. So it is 0, 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Now here it is point zero zero four minus 0. So that is minus point. Uh, 0, 0, 004. See here I am putting, I am just putting this minus sign because the pressure value is increasing. As I told you, if the pressure value increases, see for all the cases the pressure value is increasing. So all the cases I am putting a minus sign. Okay, simply I am putting a minus sign. So I put a minus sign and how to obtain this value? It is 0 0.016 minus 0 0.004. Okay, you will be getting this value. Like that, you can get all the values of delta H. After get, getting delta H, you can find out H value, the height of 
the specimen value the initial height is given as 2.5 cm so the next one will be to uh, the initial height this one the initial height minus sigma delta h here the delta h value is 0 so 2.5 minus 0 that is 2.5 itself now in this next case it is 2.5 minus 0 0.004 here you can you have 0 so you can neglect that so the value is 2.496 now in this case it is 2.5 minus 0 0.012 minus 0 0.004 minus 0 that is 2.484 now Similarly, you can get all the values. Now, how to get this value, the final value? Here it will be 2.5 minus 0 0.08 minus 0 0.122 minus 0 0.114 minus 0 0.06 minus 0 0.028 minus 0 0.012 minus 0 0.004 minus 0 is equal to 2.080. So, like that you can find out H value. Now, E value can be obtained using this formula H minus HS by HS. HS is already given in the question. In the previous slide, HS is already given in the question. It is 1.25. So here, H is already obtained. So H minus HS by HS can be done. In the first case, 2.5 minus 1.25 by 1.25. So like that, you have the H value. You can just find out the E value. So E value at each pressure value is obtained using height of solids method. The first method is obtained over here, is used over here and E values are obtained. Now we will be plotting the pressure values and the E values in a semi-log graph. Okay. On the log scale you have the pressure values and on the Y scale you will have the void ratio values. So this is the curve. I have plotted the curve. Here you have the log scale. Here you have the normal scale void ratio. Okay. Now the first one is pre-consolidation pressure can be obtained by using Casagrande method, the graphical method. You have to consider a point where the curvature is maximum. And then you need to uh, draw a tangent to that point then you have to draw a horizontal to that point then bisect this angle using the angle bisector this angle bisector will be meeting the straight line extended at a point and you have to take the value of sigma at that point and this sigma value will be your pre-consolidation pressure and from here from this graph the pre-consolidation pressure is obtained as 180 kilonewton per meter square. Now the second one is compression index. We have studied that the compression index is the slope of the linear portion of E log sigma bar curve. So just find out the slope of the linear portion and from here you can see that the slope is this value. Here the value is point. 85 here the value is 0 0.75 and this one corresponds to 400 and this point corresponds to 900 so you can just solve out this equation and you will be getting cc value compression index value as 0 0.3 so this is how you solve this problem okay thank you